prophetic helping hands. I used to be leading Port Harcourt, then what we call early will I seek thee. And it's a, uh, a prayer time between 5.30 a.m. to 7 a.m. every day. And I told the members, all great achievers in life, from Genesis to Revelation, they are early risers. Abraham rose early and stood in the place where he met with the Lord. David said, early will I seek thee. Jesus rose early, the Bible says, early before it was day. He had gone to the place where he was praying. All great achievers, mobilizers, impactful people in the kingdom are early risers. Why? It was Dr. Martin Luther, not Martin Luther King. Martin Luther was the one that wrote 99 Thesis against the Catholic Church and the Catholic Doctrine. Dr. Martin Luther said, the day is so full of adversities and oppositions of the enemy that if I don't rise early to conquer them ahead, I will not have the grace to go through the day. The day is full of oppositions of the enemy and adversities of the enemy and they said, if I don't rise early to conquer them ahead, I will not have to go through the day. All great people in the hand of the Lord are early risers. And if you are going to conquer the North, inculcate that into your culture. Amen. The spirit of the south presented as a serpent. And it took long fasting and praying to conquer the spirit. The spirit of the west was represented as bare chested warlike old men. It took a lot of fastings and a lot of praying to conquer the spirit of the West. The 90th day of the fasting and all night, when the spirit of the West was conquered, there was like in the revelation a thunder thing, a blast. And all this empty, bare-chested, warlike old men were blasted on the floor. The church took a flight from that day on. Growth started. The spirit of the north was represented in lions. And I was wrestling with this lion. Two were killed. One was badly injured and escaped. You guys, you now have to locate that third one and kill it. Amen? <laughs> a lion spirit is a vampire spirit. That's why there's too much of bloodshed. When the Lord was sending us to the west, he said, and the west shall serve the Lord. Everywhere he has sent us to, he has given a command word. And the West shall serve the Lord. We went on that mandate. And God is doing his work in the West today. Amen? Amen. Is he Ikurudu or which church are you? Ikurudu, right? Yeah, he just came, recall for a training from the West. Where's the other tall man? Huh? From AKT. Okay. And 
where in the west? Where Ekpe? Right. They are spreading. The west is spreading. And so shall you spread even more. The mandate is, God doesn't look at what the enemy is doing. Like the Midianites, they are going to start cutting themselves down with their swords. Like the Midianites. Like the armies of Sennacherib. They shall hear the sound of the foot of angels. And they shall disappear from their hiding places. God is not moved by what the enemy does. He sets his own agenda. And his own people dedicated to his own agenda will conquer. Amen. Amen. In your leadership convocation, I'm supposed to be tackled next week. Uh, but we'll have to shift it a little bit. The programs are becoming too much for me. Uh, my body needs to be helped a little bit. <laughs> I'm not a 40, 50 year old man anymore jumping around. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> the, the word the Lord is putting in my mouth for you is a word on dedication and commitment. What was it that brought Jesus all the way from heaven? We sing a song. He came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debts to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I live. What is it that brought Jesus all the way from heaven? When you check the book of Revelation, there's nothing on planet earth that resembles one, one, one tenth of the beauty of heaven. Nothing. No palace architecture resembles the beauty of heaven. Why did Jesus leave that? come here for 33 years. And the Bible says he chose to become poor. Coming on earth is poverty by excellence for him. That you through that poverty might become rich. Not only rich financially, spiritually. Give you a place that you never could have. He died the death you couldn't die. He paid the debt you couldn't pay. He gave you the life you could never acquire. And that's the riches. Plus, he now said, for those who are dedicated to this cause, all other things will be added to them. Now, what was it that brought Jesus all the way from heaven to planet earth? The Bible describes in the book of Revelation the beauty of heaven. He said the Broadway, the main street, is made up of glistering gold, transparent, transparent gold. So if you stand on it, you can see yourself deep, 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 deep down. It's gold, transparent, and why would Jesus leave that place and come here? Dirty, muddy, dusty. Why? He was he came on in obedience to the mandate of his father. I'd like us to look at the book of John chapter 14 verse 31. In obedience to the mandate that's why he came. And we must define why we are Christians at all. You are not a Christian just to come to church. You are not a Christian just to clap your hands. All of those are good. A Christian to bear fruit. And in fact, he say bear much fruit. The fruit he wants you to bear is not mango fruit. It's not purple fruit. 
It is the fruit of disciples. That's the singular reason why you are. Jesus came all the way in obedience. Number one, because he loved his father. How many of you have ever imagined that it was love that brought Jesus? Now, number two, that love motivated his obedience. And if you truly are in love with God, it will motivate your obedience. Obedience to what Jesus came for. Let's read John chapter 14, verse 31. Want to read. He says, For that the world may know that I love Father. See that, excuse me. Why does the world have to know? Now, this is utter dedication. And I'm going to define dedication today. Dedication. That's the subject I'm looking at. Your dedication and your commitment. Utter dedication. He said that the world may know that I love the Father. Is the reason that he had to come. And as the Father gave me and even so I do. So he said, arise. Let us go hence. Where was Jesus speaking? In the garden of Gethsemane. Now, now they were rather going to the garden of Gethsemane. Now, they've had the last meal. And Jesus had told his disciples, one of you will betray me as it is written of me. And they were all asking, is it? I will dip the, he dipped the bread and if you note it in the sauce and gave it to Judas and Judas took it and the Bible says after that the devil entered it so up until that time Judas had opportunity to repent up on time no can betray the master no up until that time, the devil entered him. Up until that time, he was acting on his own free will to go and negotiate the price for Jesus, to go and collect the money, 30 pieces of... It was his free will. It was his choice. That tells you your choice is powerful. You know, we tend to blame everything on the devil. He's the devil. He's the devil. He's the devil. I said to somebody three days ago, I said, the theology of responsibility. That every action you take, you are responsible for taking it. Somebody didn't take it for you. Now, so, lack of responsibility, we just keep shifting anything, everything on the, he's the devil. He's the devil. Upon that last minute, Satan had not entered Judas yet. Now, whether you are going to choose to obey the master in making disciples, it's your choice. Satan can stop you. Whether you are going to choose not to, you just come to church, you clap your hands, you give your offering and just go home. And you are, you say, well, I'm very busy. You, you, you know, I am CEO. You, you know, you know. It's also your choice. And it is that choice that God rewards. That's where the reward differ one from another person. It is the choice. And my prayer is the churches, Salamis, in the north and the middle belt. I want you to understand God has positioned you at this time for strategic reason. When the Lord was moving us from Lagos to the north, crisis had started in the north. Lord, why are you moving us from Lagos and then to the north? And he said, and the north shall give up. The north shall give up. And once God is determining his own agenda, there are no devils. They may plan, they may execute, but God is going to thwart it. He said, the north shall give up. I, I followed him for some years. I know once he says it, he will move heaven and everything to get it done. The north shall give up. Yeah. 
And then he said, the south shall not hold back. Once the north gives up, the flame and the fire of revival will engulf the south. Because there's so much laxity in the south. There is so much freedom. Everybody take it easy. But they say, let the fire start from the north. Where people are under persecution. And yet are blazing with fire and commitment. They say, then the south will not hold back. It's a mandate. And Salamites in the north and middle belt, you are responsible for executing this mandate. My daughter Covenant called me one day and said, Dad, thank you for obedience. If you looked at the work in Port Harcourt, you had come to a level of rest in ministry. That was a global church. And if you refuse to move, what God is doing in the nations today, we would have lost them. He said, but... God said to you, go and open me a gateway church to the nations. You left everything behind. In obedience, you moved. Started all over again. And today we are in the nations. Now, until you take the step of obedience, God does not back up your resolution. He said, Lord, teach me how to evangelize. Oh, Lord, give me boldness. Until you take the step and begin to speak to somebody, boldness doesn't come upon you. Amen. And he said, when you are going to speak to somebody, you don't bother. Yours is to keep studying, keep studying the word every day, keep studying your Bible. He said, at that time, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost will bring out of the things you have studied and remind you of what to say at that moment. Now you've got to take steps of obedience. And when we take steps of obedience, the north and the middle belt will give up. Amen. 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 Senekarib and his army, they have sent their chief of army star Rabshake to go and intimidate Ezekiah. Say, who is the God that will deliver you out of the hand of Senekarib? Say, where are the gods of Egypt? Where are the gods of Assyria? Why did they not deliver them? Show me the God that will deliver you from the hand of Senekarib. And Hezekiah just turned to the Lord. He said, today is a day of vexation. He said, because children have come to the bath. It's time for a woman to deliver a baby, but there's no strength for her to push. He said, arise, O God, and let man know that they are but men. When God moved, Necarib paid for it. He paid for it. Amen? Dedication. Dedication. God must see dedicated hearts and dedicated hands for him to do anything. Let's see that dedication. John chapter 14 verse 31. Let's see the dedication of Jesus to the commands of his own father. Let's read it again. But that the world may know that I love the father. And as the father gave me commandment, even so I do. Arise. And let's go hence. So he's telling them, let's get out of the table of, the, of, of supper. Let's go hence. He's now going to the garden of Gethsemane to pray. The last prayer. Let's go hence. I must obey the father. They said, that's the purpose I came. Because I love the father. I love the mandate of seeking and saving the lost. I have come for that purpose. Let's go hence. There is no excuse in this matter. Let's go hence. It's time Salamis in the north and middle belt. We begin to challenge ourselves. Let's go hence. God has spoken. Let's obey the mandate of the Father. Let's go hence. It's time we quit excuses. It's time we stop celebrating what God has given us. And start celebrating God himself. Amen? It's time. And then we are going to see the release of his blessing. When Jesus said this, he was showing for dedication. Dedication. Dedication to what? He said, something is written of me in the volume of the books. He said, Father, I come. 
to fulfill the things that are written of me. And if you go through the, 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 the prophets, you are going to see a lot that has been written about Jesus before he was even born. A lot. The city he will be born, it was written. That he will be born of a virgin, Mary, a, a virgin woman, it was written. That, 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 that he, he was going to be persecuted by the Pharisees, and it was written. That he was going to be spat upon and hung on the tree, it was written. And some of these 700 years, 1,000 years before he ever came. Oh, that's why I believe the Lord so much. Now, there was no one thing written in the Bible about Jesus in the Old Testament that were not fulfilled in the New Testament. Nothing. Not one. Not one. And if God spoke almost 20, 40 things in the Old Testament, thousands of years, and they came to pass in the New Testament, thousands of years later on, better believe that God. Better believe that God. Amen. He said, when he's born, he shall be called Emmanuel. That means God with us. Then the angel went further and said, when he's born, his name shall be called Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Oh my God. Now, so you have life in your hand. But are you willing to take the step and go hence and give that life to others? Two things you can do. You can sit on the life you have. And that's what 90% of Christians do. We sit on it in the church. Attending church, clapping our hands, giving our offerings. But Jesus said, let's go hence. Let's go give this life to others. Amen? Dedication. Help me say dedication. dedication. Say that to somebody. In, in, in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 7, look how... how the Bible says that Jesus came to earth as it was written of him. Chapter 10 verse 7. Then said I, lo, I come. I come. I'm not hesitating. I'm obeying my father because I love my father. I love the mandate of seeking and saving the lost. Say, lo, I come. In the volume of books it is written of me. To do thy will, O God. So Jesus came only, 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 not to establish religion, but to do the will of the Father. To do thy will, O God. And what is the will of the Father that he came to do? He didn't come to establish religion. So Christianity is not a religion. He came to give life. And life more abundantly. So Christianity is life. Amen. So what is the will of the father that he came to do? He explained that in Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Luke 10 19. Are we there? Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Can we read it together? Behold, I give unto you what? Who is he giving this power to? Who, excuse me? me? Behold, I give unto you what? Power. To do what? <laughs> and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Because as you step out to go, the enemy will raise his head. That's the reason he equipped you. As you step out to do the will of the Father, Jesus said, I came to do your will, just your will. Amen? Just the will of the Father. And what's the will of the Father? He said to seek and to save the lost. To seek and to save the lost. You don't sit in the cozy office saving the lost. Jesus came to seek. That means he must be on the go. He's seeking and saving them. Amen? And that's why Jesus went about everywhere. And the power of God was with him. Amen. He came to seek and to save the lost. Now, that power was what he gave you in Luke chapter 10 verse 19. You can pocket it. You can sit on it. You can discard it. Or you can use it. So, for when you start going, 
the power start following. Amen? When you start going, please get up. Every believer, you can cast out devils. Every believer, you can lay hands on the sick. Every believer. Now, this is power to cast out devil. Hold on. Power to heal the sick. Amen. Power to tread on all the powers of the enemy. As long as this man, this believer, this child of God is going, they will follow. Start going. I give unto you power to cast out devils, to heal the sick. As long as he is going, they will follow. He stops, they stop. He gets distracted into doing some other things, go into the crowd, go into the market, go into, start doing, they also get distracted. At this point, no one will be saved. No one will be born again. No one will be healed. No one will be delivered. And at best, this is what believers are busy doing. We are so distracted from the mandate of the Father. Jesus said, for to do thy will, O God, I come in the volume of the books because it is written of me. To do thy will, O God. Our world will be saved. Come on, our world will be saved. What is the will of the Father? Seek and save the lost. Seek them out. Save them. Amen? Seek and save the lost. Please come back. Thank you. Be seated. Seek and save the lost. That's the will of the Father. There is what you call a will. When you write a will, it must be executed. Right? Your will is registered, maybe the high court. And then, when that person passes away, the will is open. The Bible says, until the testator dies. The testament cannot be executed. The testament is the will. And that's the reason the devil cannot claim any authority over you because he has no testament. The devil didn't die. And since he didn't die, he has no testament. There's nothing to enforce on you. But Jesus died. Jesus shed his blood. And blood is the medium of a covenant. That's the reason we are believers of the new covenant. And that's what you want to let people know. That's what you want to expose them to. That they too now can be born again. They can be delivered from the hands of the devil now. Now, by doing that, you are doing the will of the Father. That's what we are called to do. That's the reason. And the primary reason we are in church. The primary reason. On the last day, the question will be, how many souls will God see lying up behind you? How many souls? I do not celebrate my, my office. I celebrate serving God. As a bishop, I led my team out on evangelism and on follow-up. Open KDF centers, even in marketplaces. Pastor Joseph, you were a manager in a restaurant. 
in the quarter market. I open one KDS center in your, in your, in your restaurant. Amen? Today, he is a pastor himself. Some guys will come and they are eating. I didn't get distracted. I was focusing on teaching. Amen? Do not celebrate your office. You know, I'm a reverend. I am. It means nothing to God. What you do with it is what matters. How many are you seeking daily? How many are you saving daily? I'm an elder. It doesn't matter. Being an elder or a deacon does not give you reward per se. It's what you do with it that brings souls to heaven that calculates your reward. So today, we, we must stop celebrating I'm pastor, I'm reverend, I am... Uh, it, it's, not, it's not important. We came to Abuja here. I led a group. Of, I didn't know Abuja. I didn't know anything about Abuja. But I know that... I don't know why we, we came to this. It was this market. It's now that I know it was Utaku market we came. I don't know why we came to Utaku market. All the way from Jabi, there are other places. There are other places. But we drove to this place. I put my beret cap and a glass to disguise. And we went into the market. I was speaking with some traders and, you know, and all of that. And I said, one boy said, this is our bishop. This is our bishop. And, and before I know it, they were already coming. It was becoming a prayer meeting in the market. And Reverend Joyce, he said, Dad, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Because it was becoming a prayer meeting already in the market. I thought they won't recognize me. <laughs> I put the red cap. And I put that glass. <laughs> we used to be walking around um, in, 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 in Jabi then. In the evenings, walk around. You know, just take a walk. And one evening... Three people accosted me. On the road. Bless you, sir. They kneel down. Prayer. I walk a little bit. Another one. Bless you, sir. Kneel down. Pray. And I said to, to, to mom, I said, we can't hide. We can't hide. I thought Abuja is a neutral ground. We can't hide. So we started walking around in the, in the open. I started walking in my compound. Now, Jesus, the Bible says, came to do the will of his father. Every believer is charged to do the will of the father. What was the last will that Jesus, in his own case, he did not seal it. He did not deliver it to a high court. He delivered it to the court of heaven. And upon that will, we will all be assessed as believers. Pastor or no pastor, on that will, he said, go ye into the world, that's the last will, and make disciples. That's what it means to be a Christian. And then baptize them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. So whatever profession you are as a believer, Whatever business you are involved as a believer, whatever hierarchy you occupy in the church, now your job now is to execute the will of Jesus. Amen? There are too many arguments that are unnecessary. Uh, you pay tight. You don't pay tight. That is uh, law. That is not law. Unnecessary. It's it's, it's an assignment of the devil to deny the people of God of their breakthrough. Tithe has never been the law. Tithe did not start under the law. Tithe began under the dispensation of promise. There are seven human dispensations in the Bible. The dispensation of promise was where Abraham operated. Noah operated under the dispensation of human government. Adam operated under the dispensation of innocence. Oh, I wish he took the, 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 
the fruit of, of the tree of life, none of us will have died. None. The tree of life carries the seed of immortality. If that was the fruit he ate, no human being will have experienced death. But the devil pushed him to eat of the knowledge of good and evil. And he told him, he said, you will be wise like God. Go and eat that one. Don't eat this one. Yes, he ate of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. And men are faced with good and evil today. Sometimes they are lucky. Some good things happen. Other times, bad luck. And evil, 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 evil happen. How can a child take a gun and get the mother shot dead? How? How? How can somebody walk into a shop, a shopping mall and shoot seven people dead for no just cause? They didn't commit a crime. Knowledge of good and evil. Once Adam ate that, that seed multiplied upon the whole earth. It's a seed of sin. But Jesus came as it is written of him to do the will of his father. To seek, that means he must be going to seek. You know your friends. You know those who are not born again. Seek them out. Get them saved. That's what he's talking about. You don't have to stand on the pulpit to preach uh, before you save the lost. You only need to... Now, now in China, and, and let me say this to us, the churches in the north and the middle belt, it's high time we begin to understand the secret of the church in China. When they had liberty to worship, when they had cathedrals to worship, for many years, the total population of Christians in China were 800,000. It's leisure. Go to church. Clap your hands. Go back home. But then the Communist Party took over China. And their first target were Christians. Began to kill Christians, torture Christians. Destroyed cathedrals. And they melted underground. What you call underground churches. Well, when I was a younger Christian, I thought this church were under the ground. See, they dug somewhere under the ground, built churches. That's what I thought was. And so when I began to read books like Torture for Christ and, you know, all of that, I understand what they meant by underground churches. It's KDF. They didn't call it KDF. It provoked believers to know the Bible. Because you could not even bring Bible to China. If the secret police find Bible in your hand, you are in jail, tortured, and some of them die. An American evangelist came to China with five copies of Bible. He spent five years in, in prison. An American evangelist, five years in prison for bringing Bible to China. And so what do these Chinese Christians do? If one person gets a copy of the Bible... Some will handwrite the whole Bible, Genesis to Revelation. Handwrite. You know how many years that is? Some, they will tear page by page. You take this page. You take this page. You take this page. You take this page. Cram your own page. When you finish cramming your own page, give it to him. He finished cramming his own. And they circulate the Bible around many believers. So the believers... By the time they've gone around, over a thousand believers know the Bible in the head from Genesis to Revelation. So when they come for their, the secret police are everywhere in China. Everywhere. When they come to a family, you, your wife, disciple another family. Because they wanted, the Chinese government wanted to do population control you can't, no family must give birth to more than one child. One child per family. One child per family. If you give birth to a second child, the child is either killed or you are jailed. It's an offense to give birth to a second child. 
So when two families meet, you have a husband and wife, they are discipling another family, husband and wife. So four of them are on the dining table. They are talking. Yes. And when the secret police comes in, they change the conversation to business. When the secret police goes, he didn't say any Bible there. So he goes. They resume their Bible study. According to John chapter 1, and they recite it. According to most Amos, according to, you know, in their head. What a challenge to Nigerian Christians. We have liberty. We carry the book, but we don't know the content of the book. That's the reason many people are going to places where they give them coconut water as anointing. Where do Christians run into? Oh, we have anointing. And then they buy coconut water. Buy, uh, 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 what do you and, and, uh, Holy water. Holy water that is fetched from the tap. In the tanker. <laughs> Holy water. <laughs> When you become a child of God, whatever you touch is holy. <laughs> when you become a child of God, he said, you shall be holy for I, the Lord your God, I am holy. You are not ordinary personality anymore as a child of God. You are a holy child of God. Whatever you touch is holy. Amen? Amen. A young man many years ago, the wife was on admission the hospital was not too far from the house where I lived then. And the wife was having complication at birth. And the doctor says the baby has stopped breathing. So they said they were going to wheel the wife into the theater to cut her open to bring out a dead baby. Double pain. You are cutting her to bring out a dead baby for her. And the husband said, hold on. He ran to the house. But those are the times I don't come out. I am in the chambers. And he waited, he waited. I didn't even have information he was because once I'm there, nobody comes. And when it was becoming too long, he said to himself, nobody said that to him. He said, this is the house of the anointed. Whatever is in the house of anointed is anointed. He plucked a flower from, from that place. And he went to the hospital. Put it on the wife's stomach. And he said, baby, come alive. And it was just about five minutes after that the baby kicked. That baby was born. That baby is over 20 years old today. He is himself a minister today. Amen. Understand who you are as a child of God. Understand that when you got born again, the spirit of Jesus Christ was what came inside of you. It was not the sp another spirit. It was the spirit of Jesus Christ. And he that is joined with the Lord is one spirit. So you carry the anointing he carried. When he was going, he breathed. He said, as the Father has sent me, so send I you. Back to John chapter 14, verse 31. He said, he came because he loved the Father. He came to pursue the mandate of the Father. Now he said, as the Father has sent me, so send I you. So everything you saw he did, he said, now you go do them. Including seeking and saving the lost. Please say to somebody there, say you are only a Christian, not for religion. You are a Christian, to seek, to seek and save, save the lost. How many people have come into the kingdom through your hands? Ask somebody. Ask somebody. Amen. 
Amen. So what, did, what, what were the Chinese Christians doing? Please be seated. Once they could not, they didn't have liberty to worship anymore, they resorted to what we call KDF. What Young Icho called home cell. What the church in, oh, well, that's, uh, they call it D7. That is one Christian disciple seven. This makes seven disciples. D7, project D7. Now many people are coming all over the world with a project now. Because the days are evil. Because it's not enough to preach to people and then we shout and they clap and they jump and jump. Yay! It's not enough. People are not getting rooted. They are getting hyped. He said to seek and to save the lost. He said it is written of me in the volume of the books. Lo, I come for to do your will. May every day of your life until you meet Jesus, be devoted to doing the will of Jesus. Amen. Dedication. Somebody say dedication. dedication. Help me say to three people around you, this is dedication. So let's understand dedication. Amen. Let's understand dedication. So when you talk about dedication to the Lord and the, the, the kingdom of God, you are talking of following the Lord wholeheartedly. Mungo Park was a lawyer. A very respected lawyer in the United Kingdom. Very respected. From a noble family. There was no special call for Mungo Park. Mungo Park only read the Bible and said, go into the world and make disciples. And he said, oh, they are the, 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 the jungles of Africa where people have not heard the gospel. I'm going there. And his colleagues discouraged him. You have noble career here. And you are going to waste away your life. 60, 70% of people that go to Africa never returned. Is a burial ground of, of, of the white man. And Mungo Park says, Jesus came all the way from heaven. And he was buried on the earth for me. So if it will cost my life going to Africa, I'm ready to give it. Mungo Park came. He was not specifically a missionary. He was an explorer. But added the gospel to exploration. He navigated the whole of River Niger from wherever, river, wherever, and the continent, all over. Added the gospel to exploration. When Mugu Park died, and his body was flown back to England, flight or ship or whatever, there no aircraft then. He was laid where. Prime ministers are laid when they die. He was accorded the royal burial of prime ministers. Because he came to do something. Even though on exploration, he was seeking and saving the lost. His voyage, his walk, opened Africa up to the gospel. Because now, in all the voyage, he understood the terrain of Africa. He began to understand their culture. He ate their food. He ran stomach, but you see eat their food. He will get sick, but he will recover. He 
He came to do the will. That's dedication. Somebody say dedication. Help me say that yourself. Dedication. Dedication is to follow the Lord wholeheartedly. What is it? It's dedicated Christians that eventually possess the land. The Bible shows us something in the book of Numbers. Numbers chapter 32. And I want you to understand what that scripture is saying. Numbers 32 verse 11 and verse 12. Moses had gone to be on the mountain with God to receive the Ten Commandments. And while he was there, the children of Israel, who were not following the Lord wholeheartedly, had gotten weary. And that's how many people are getting weary while we wait for Jesus right now. Had gotten weary. And they said to Aaron, Aaron, he said, we don't know what has become of this old man. Whether he's still alive or not, we don't know. But we have not seen him for 40 years. Now, so why not make us a God? Hear that, hear that. Make us a God that will lead us back to Egypt. Human made God. That will lead us back to Egypt. Now, in your own case, you may not ask for a God that will lead you. But you see, this was a major distraction to their faith. And it distracted them permanently from possessing the land. And Moses asked for, I mean, sorry, Aaron asked for the golden earrings, all those who have gold, and, and they brought them plenty, plenty, plenty. He melted them and made a calf, an animal. And he put it before him. O ye Israel, this is your God. Hey, la, la, la. Was that the God that whipped Pharaoh? Was that the God that smote Egypt? Was that the God that turned their rivers into blood? Was that the God that smote their firstborns? How come that man gets very forgetful? And quickly so. Well, think about it. Some of those that, that you have problem with are some of those people you have helped who have turned around and become whatever. Now, the reason it pains you is because you help them. And now they have turned around. Now, think about how much that will pain God. Are these the people I deliver with my mighty hand? Can I hear you shout theology of responsibility? <laughs> now, I want us to read that scripture. Numbers, are we there? Please put it up. Chapter 32, verse 11. And God said, this is about it. Because they are so quickly forgotten what I did for them. And made a man-made God representing me. He says, surely none of the men that came up out of Egypt from 20 years old and upward shall see the land. What does that mean? From 20 years upward, they knew what I did. They saw the hand of God upon Pharaoh. They saw the mighty miracles. They saw the deliverance. From 20 years upward, he said, they shall not see the land. This was where they spent extra 40 years. Because they quickly forgot. Shall we quickly forget how God delivered us? I can't forget. I knew where he's bringing me from. But for his mighty hand, I won't be here. He didn't pick me because I was the most qualified. In fact, I think I was the least qualified. And yet, in his grace and mercy, he picked me. 
wash me to use me. How can you so quickly forget that, my friend? How can you now become a big man in the office, pastor, reverend, elder? For what? They quickly forgot. And he said, none of those who were 20 years upward, that's age of responsibility. Now, they are brought it to 70 years now, right? In the Western world now, when you are age 17, you must leave your father's house. Amen? At age 17, if you are still in your father's house, some parents insist they pay rent. You have come to the age of responsibility. You don't eat your father's food for free anymore from age 17. Oh, sure. <laughs> We're interviewing one young man. Uh, I've gone all through the training for Dickinry and all of that. They are fasting. And their interview started. How old are you, 30? Where, what do you do? Uh, I'm not really working. Where do you stay with my mother? At age 30. You are staying with your mother. You are not responsible. You can't take care of the house of God. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> Age 30. You are still eating mama's food. <laughs> when will you start producing food for mama? At age 30, you are still your mother's responsibility. Ah. Uh. <laughs> the interview panel just came and told me what they just did. I said, fine. God said from age 20 and upwards. Amen. He could be excused if he was 20. He could be excused. Praise God. Now, why do they miss the land? This is what God had promised their forefathers, Abraham. Why did they miss it? They lacked dedication. Not hard. And look at what the Bible says there. Let's read that. And you know what the Bible says about dedication. He says, surely, none of the men that came up out of Egypt from 20 years old and upward shall see the land. That means they forfeit eternal inheritance. He said, which I swear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob. See, this promise has been there, generations behind you. Your own is now to go and enter it and enjoy it, but you have forfeited it eternally. Why? He said, because they have not wholly followed me dedication. Can I hear a shout dedication? dedication? They have not wholly. Dedication means to wholly follow. Please, people of God, don't play sentiment with God. You know, many years ago, I was just coming into ministry. And I was studying God's characteristics and relationship with ministers. I was in the book of Leviticus then studying about the Aaronic priesthood. And that's when God said to Moses to anoint Aaron and his children as priests before him. And he said, perpetual generation. And they were anointed. Moses anointed them. But then, Nedam and Abihu, the first, those are the two sons of Aaron. The first son, the second son of Aaron. They went into the temple, lifted a censer when God had not instructed. And lit a fire on it. They are not supposed to light a fire on a censer. There is always what you call the lava altar in the outer temple. Fire must be there 24 hours. That was the place the children of Israel got so careless. They allowed the fire to go out. And God said, because you allowed the fire in the house of the Lord to go out, poverty shall overrun the land. Now, now, that's the fire they were supposed to use in lighting the censer. They did not use that. They went and lit the censer before them, by themselves before God. And the Bible said, God called it strange fire. And it said, fire came from heaven and consumed them. Two children of Aaron. Both of them the same day. And Moses turned to Aaron. And he said, you cannot even cry. He said, for if you cry, the Lord will fall upon you. Yes, you see, I learned long ago, you don't play sentiment with God. You don't. You don't play sentiment with God. Here is Aaron. He has just lost two of his 
more senior sons in one fell swoop and he's not permitted to cry. Because if he cries, he will die automatically. God doesn't play sentiment. And let's not come and play sentiment with God. Let's not come and use local interpretation with God. My people say, it's not what your people say. It's what God say. Some people are running their home with local sentiment. My people say, what does, do you mean by what your people say? Marriage is not your tradition. Yes, sir. It's not an Igbo tradition. It's not Yoruba tradition. It's not Hausa tradition. Marriage is heaven's tradition. And he said, if the husband does not take care of the wife as Christ took care of the church, you are not worthy to be respected. You come around, I'm a husband. Why are you not respecting me? Show me how you have taken care of her as Christ has taken care of the church. And if a woman will not submit to love the husband like loving Christ, she is disqualified from being a wife. But I've said over and over, it's a loving leadership that compels loving submission. Loving leadership. You don't force your wife to submit. Your love makes her submit joyfully. When you're forcing her to submit, she, it feels like slavery. Amen? Love her more than you love yourself, my friend. Jesus loved me more than he loved himself. That's why he, he put his hand like this, they nailed it. He put his leg, they nailed it. He loved me. That is the death I should die. I couldn't die. He died. And the Bible compares the relationship of the husband and the wife to that of Christ and the church. No sentiment. Please solemnize sentiment die. Don't play sentiment with God at all. You see, when I studied that, the fear of God caught my heart. Don't come before the Lord with sentiment. Eh? Aaron, two children, one fell swoop, and you are not permitted to cry. I, I, I dropped my Bible, put my pen, and I, I was meditating on that scripture. I said, God is to be feared. You don't play sentiment with him. Because he didn't play sentiment about your salvation. He let go of his best. And now it's time for you to go. He said, let's go hence. Go and seek and save the lost. Dedication. Somebody say dedication. dedication. Can I hear you say that loud? Dedication. Let me hear you say one more time. Dedication. So it is to follow the Lord wholeheartedly. It could be expensive. Sometimes things are happening around you. You know what to do, but you are not doing them because you love the Lord. You fear the Lord. Dedication. Amen? And your dedication is tested about how much you go to seek and to save the lost. How much you go to save, seek, and save the lost. That's where your real dedication is tested. Amen? No sentiment with God. So don't come before the Lord and try to explain. Obey. Just obey. Just obey. Okay, amen? Amen? Now look at what Moses said to them in Exodus chapter 32 verse 39, 29. Dedication. 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 Exodus 32, verse 29. Let's look at what Moses said to them. For Moses had said, 
Console. Clarity. 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 Represent that. Whatever. Mixer. Clarity. I don't know. It's coming from camera or whatever, but represent that. Your letters are blurred. Your pictures are blurred. All right. You see that? Okay. Good. Right. Let's read that. For Moses had said, what did Moses say? Consecrate yourselves today to the Lord. Separate yourself today unto the Lord. Separate yourself today unto the Lord. Even every man upon his son and upon his brother, that he may, the Lord may bestow upon you a blessing. If you know what Moses is asking them to do here, the world we are in today will think it is callous. And the Bible says, it is whoever do, obeys and does this that blessing will be bestowed upon. When Moses came from the mountain and the children of Israel have gone dancing before the, the idol, Moses said, today you have been naked before your enemies. Your protection is gone today and he went and stood by the mountain side and he faced the children of Israel he said who is on the Lord's side let it come to me only the tribe of Levi came and then I said turn back your sword fall upon your brothers your sisters and he said Again, here is where sentiment can destroy you. He said, only when you do that will the Lord bestow a blessing. How many thousands died that day? Huh? What? Please read that scripture. Get there. Let's not give them wrong figure. Amen? It's more than 17,000. Yes? They fell upon them with a sword. While he's checking out that scripture, I, I need you to understand this. When God created The man. The man is supposed to worship the Lord in hollowness. Adam missed that. All right? And God raised the family of Noah to exactly do that. Noah got drunk and cursed. Who did he curse? Who did Noah cause? He caused Canaan. Who is Canaan? Now, who are the name of the three children of Noah? Mm -mm. Japheth. Who was the one that saw the nakedness of the father and went outside and began to broadcast? Who is Canaan? The son of Ham. Why did Noah calls Canaan that he shall be a servant of servants. You know who Canaan, descendants of Canaan are? The Palestinians. These present Palestinians are the descendants of Canaan. Who are the descendants of Shem? He said to, to in the course, he said, Canaan. And he said, they shall serve Shem. Who is Shem? Descendants of Shem are the Israelites now. Shemites. That's why you hear anti-Semitism. So Canaan, 
whose descendants are the Philistines, are to serve Shem, whose descendants are Israelites. If you do not know scripture, and you, for any reason you lift your voice against Israel, you are bringing yourself under a curse. He said, anyone that curses you is cursed. And anyone that blesses you is blessed. Amen? From time to time, I try to do a seed that blesses Israel. Because that is scriptures. Amen? There is this... Um, uh, anyway, that's my personal thing with God. Praise God. Now, but I, I ask God, why did he not cause harm? Why Canaan? Who is the descendant of harm? Because if harm is caused, his descendants are caused. That's the meaning of what Noah was saying to Ham, say, you and your descendants, you are cursed. And you know this Palestinian were scattered all over the world. He was the king of Jordan then, not too long ago, that brought them back to where they are. They are now fighting Israel. The United Nations and the Arabs are backing them up. But you know, of late, under Trump, three Arab nations left them alone. They signed what they call Abraham Accord. That they will never fight Israel anymore. How can 48 nations, 48 nations, fight a nation that has just come together again, less than 3 million people, 48 nations with their population, and in six day war, Israel beat them hands down. Israel has been in captivity for 500 years. But the miracle is that wherever they were scattered to all over the world, they still came back with Hebrew language. It's a miracle first class. Oh, I don't know. The people who deal with uh, population, whatever, whatever, they said, after you leave your nation, your tribe, for 100 years, that tribe is extinguished extinguished, lost forever. No, but not Jews, because they are a protege of God's descendants. 500 years scattered all over the world, they still came back with Hebrew language. Some of you have not scattered. You don't even know your language now. Your children can't speak your language. <laughs> you are not scattered anywhere. <laughs> One of the prime ministers, he said for one Israeli that is killed, 10 Palestinians must die. For one Israeli that is killed. We are praying for peace. But until Jesus comes, there cannot be peace between those two nations. It is prophetic. There's nothing the United Nations can do about it. Amen? And in fact, one of them, uh, one Palestinian uh, big shot said something that the war between Palestinian and Israeli will lead to the war of Armageddon. Oh, so they know the war of Armageddon. That's the final war on the earth. <laughs> <laughs> so let's up let's go hence let's, let's be urgent about this go seek and save the lost that's our urgent call and it requires dedication it requires what it requires what when the family of Noah could not fulfill the mandate of God God raised Abraham. There was no Jewish tribe before this time. None. But from Abraham and his obedience, 
a whole nation was going to rise. There was a promise in chapter 12, and that promise is what came to pass. A Jewish nation rose. A Hebrew tongue rose. Never existed before. And Israel was supposed to be a nation of priests unto God. But again, they disobeyed God, and God chose a tribe, the tribe of Levi. And that's the tribe that took their sword and fell upon those who committed idolatry and all of that. There are certain attitudes from your heart that the Lord rewards. It is self-sacrificing devotion unto the Lord and his mandate. That is dedication. Self-sacrificing devotion. You sacrifice yourself. You sacrifice yourself, your pleasure, your time. Self-sacrificing devotion to God and his kingdom. That is dedication. Uncompromising commitment to the Lord and to soul winning and making disciples. That is dedication. That's a force that provokes your distinction on earth and before God. Dedication provokes distinction. It's a force on, of unbroken loyalty. Unbroken loyalty. Amen? I've been on a missionary journey that is so risky and dangerous. Risky and dangerous. I was... It was almost 12 midnight. Because I had to arrive at Zorro this night and be on the way to a program in Worry the next day, I was before Onisha, police well, they stopped me there, flagged me down and insulted me. Foolish man, why are you on the road at this time? You put your family on the road. Why, why are you, you say, see, see, I'm robber, we just killed. And I just say to them, thank you. I am on a journey of obedience. At 12 midnight, I had passed Onisha. Climb the bridge. And now from Uguashuku, you are turning into the bush path. And when you turn to that bush forest path, your head swells. You know what I mean? <laughs> you are lonely. The only voice you, you are hearing are the voice of tigers, leopards, and um, these bush dogs. What are they? The dogs in the bush. What do you call them? Wolf. That's, that's the only voice you are hearing. I'm not seeing hum any human being the next one hour. And I was going. The wolves were shouting everywhere there in the bush and, you know, and all of that and so forth. I was going. And about 1 a.m. I arrived at the gate of the mission house and blasted my horn. I heard a shout of jubilation. I said, are you guys still awake? And the woman of God said to me, before it was 12 midnight, the Lord woke her up and said to her, pray for my servant. He is on a journey of obedience. I told the police I was on a journey of obedience. Why must I risk this life? Because tomorrow there's an outreach is to worry and I can't miss it. And they began to pray from that 12 midnight. By 12 midnight, I was in Onisha. I still had one hour plus to drive through the dangerous path in the, in the night. And God had raised people already praying for me. Why must I not commit and serve him with all of my heart? He has delivered you from many dangers. He has saved you in time of trouble. He has delivered your children. 
Why must you not be committed with all your life to serve him? He came for one purpose, not religion. He came for one purpose, not your clapping of hands. He came for one purpose, not church activity. He came for one purpose, seeking and saving the lost. When you put his priority forward, every other activity you do in the church gets rewarded. When you put his priority forward, every other activity you do in the church gets rewarded. Dedication. There was a day I was praying. That was yesterday. And God showed me the meaning of dedication. I was using that to pray. He said it is liquid fire from your heart unto the Lord. Liquid love. Nothing can resist it. Nothing can stand that. Amen? Nothing. Nothing can stand that. As you go dedicate yourself to win souls and establish them in church, God will give you full attention. God will give you full attention. God will give you full attention. Everything about dedication is an issue of the heart. Issue of where? It's not activity. Issue of the heart. What can you let go for your God? If you give God 10 million and it's not, your heart is not in it, it's a waste. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 23, verse 26, Proverbs, chapter 23, verse 26, I wish Makori people would be shouting amen and we can hear now. He said, my son, look at what God demanded for from you. My son, give me your heart. That's it. My son, give me your heart. I've ever heard people who have answered the call into full time, and when the challenges of full time start, oh, they say, uh, I, think, I think it is uh, business God called them to. No dedication. No dedication. Now, how will you feel when you are doing good everywhere? And a group of people band themselves together and come and look at you in the face and say, you are a witch. He say, me? He say, yes. He say, because you cast out demons, you are a witch. He say, because you heal the sick, you are a witch. You give bread to people to eat, you are a witch. Now, they are accusing you for the good things you did. How do you feel about that? But that's what they did to Jesus. They say, you are Belzebub. Belzebub is the chief of witches. He said, you are possessed with a spirit of witchcraft. That's what they were telling Jesus. And I love Jesus. He knows how to answer them all. <laughs> he said, if I are prayed by the spirit of Beelzebub, by whom are your own children casting devils out? Peter, that was his answer. He's not doing this, saying anything more. He said, because I picked your children, put my spirit in them, and they are casting out devils. If you say, I am casting out devil by Beelzebub, by whom are your own children casting them out? And the Bible said they are quiet. God will quiet in your enemies. He said, my son, give me where? What? Where? My prayer is your heart is in what you are doing. My prayer is your heart goes after what his own heart goes after. There are too many things we do in church. Uh, When I was young, we do a lot of bazaar in those days. God is not in bazaar. It's church activity. You carry one small banana. Somebody say you pay 10 naira. And that person say you pay 20 naira. And that person say 100 naira. You are competing for money. Going, 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 gone. So when did we bring lottery into the house of God? Baza. (laughs) 
<laughs> and we enjoy them in those days <laughs> because we enjoy activity, religious activities. <laughs> but to do his will is the last thing we want to get involved. He say, I come, lo, I come in the volume of the books. It is written of me for to do thy will, O God. Dedication. Dedication. If your heart is first and foremost on the work of the Lord, and what is the work of the Lord? Winning souls. Then he will multiply his own blessing upon you. Because you see, God doesn't want his children to actually lack on earth. You know why? Unbelievers will not sponsor the gospel. Hello. They are even asking what does church need money for? So they won't sponsor the gospel. Every month it will cost us almost $11,000 to buy a cable space. $11,000 every month. And church doesn't need money. <laughs> Not eleven thousand naira. Eleven thousand dollars every month. That just to get the satellite space. That doesn't include every other thing you need to do. The gospel is free, but the means of communicating is very expensive. So God wants our dedication even in our giving. Now look at what he says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 9. I was on that scripture for some time. God wants our dedication in our giving. That's why he blesses us. So that his own kingdom does not lack it. Amen. In 2 Corinthians 9 verse 6 and 7. Verse 6 and 7. But this I say, let's read it loud. This I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall also reap bountifully. Mm. Verse 7. Every man according as he purposed in his own. Ah, so where does giving come from? Where does it come from? Not your pocket. Your hand and your pocket are only communicating what your heart has decided. Period. A lady shared this testimony. She runs a car Porsche for this oil company to hire in Bonny, Ireland. And she just brought in brand new, um, not cars, this uh, Helox, right? Yeah, that, that he brought them. And they were in her garage. And that Sunday, the Lord spoke to her to give a thanksgiving seed of a hundred thousand. Uh uh. Too much now. Uh uh. He said she left the church, went outside, arguing with herself. Well, finally, at the back of her car, she wrote a check of a hundred thousand. She came back inside and gave it. That next week. Bonny Island was on fire. The radicals were everywhere, kidnapping, seizing vehicles, and any vehicle they have seized is gone. It's never coming back. And they were coming to our own car porch. You know that mob? They were coming. They were coming to her, and they had already come to her gate. They were pulling the gate open. When suddenly their commander shouted, boys, down to the garage area. They are going to open garage to go and seize buses. What made him shout to divert them from this woman's place? And they all left. Hey, 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 hey. You don't know what song they are singing at that time. Hey, hey, hey. And they went to the garage, seized buses, massacred people. She came. He said, if a seed, obedience to sow a seed of a hundred thousand, that if any of those cars was taken, they would have lost millions. And he said, daddy man, can you tell me 
Why do we stubbornly argue with God? I say it's the heart. The heart. The heart. The heart tells you what you could do with that money. Your heart tells you what you, you should do for yourself and all of that. He said, remember, now let me read from, from, from this translation, a message translation. Remember, a stingy planter, you can put on this message translation there, a stingy planter gets a stingy crop. A lavish planter gets a lavish crop. He said, I want each of you to take plenty of time to think it over and make up your own mind what you will give. That will protect you against sob stories. So tears don't come tomorrow. It will protect you against sob stories. It will protect you against being manipulated. It will protect you against tears. He said it will protect you. So what you are giving today, God said it will protect you. It will protect you. You are not doing God a favor. It will protect you against tears, crying stories, and arm twisting. He said, God loves it. I love this one. God loves it when the giver delights in giving. He delights in it. For this giver, it is not a religious duty. He delights in giving. 1992 August. I made up my mind that whatever he puts in my hand belongs to him. He directs how I spend it. And covenanted a percentage that must go into his kingdom. I've seen God perform since 1990. I'm not on salary from this church. The church doesn't pay me. For I lack nothing. I told them in church in Port Harcourt, I said, permanent secretaries are on, on level 17 or whatever they were, super pamsec then. And then uh, some graduates are on level 08. Some are on level 09. Some are on level whatever. I said, I want to go on level O God. Let him supply my needs according to his riches in glory. I decided from my heart that whatever I put in my hand belongs to him. He said, it will protect you against sob stories. Tearful stories. It will protect you against tearful stories. A very rich businessman in Germany. The wife was such a dedicated woman. Loving the Lord and serving the Lord. But the man was too dedicated to his business. that He won't give God attention. When their money coming in multiplied millions, the wife would say, let us pay tight. He said, yes, I know. I believe in tight. Let's, I, you see, I, there's this business opportunity. I want to invest and then more will come in and we'll pay more tight. Now he will invest. More comes in. He said, you know, another opportunity just open up. We'll invest and we'll have more to pay more tight. He kept doing that until World War II broke out. And everything he owned, the factories, companies, bombed into shred. There was a businessman's fellowship going on in Germany and after the World War II. And he was sharing his testimony in tears. In tears. He said, when I was young, I had money. I wouldn't give. I had strength. I wouldn't dedicate myself to serve God. My wife urged me and nudged me. But I kept resisting, thinking there was always time. He said, everything has gone up in flames in the war. Now I'm old. I don't have the strength anymore. I want to serve the Lord, but I don't have the strength. I want to give, but I don't have the money anymore. Let He said, it will protect you against sob stories fearful stories. So when you are given, remember it's not pastor you are servicing. It's the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. Dedication. Can I hear you shout ultra loyalty? 
Let me say that very loud. It's always coming from your heart. From your heart. Your heart is made up. I can forego this opportunity for the kingdom. I can forego this because I love God and I love his kingdom. I can forego my own, my own, my own thing because I love God. And, and until you come to that point, you have not understood dedication yet. Dedication. Dedication. I've gone so far. The Lord help you. There's so much. The next time we're able to meet, maybe I will now talk about why dedication. Why dedication? Why are we emphasizing this? Because it was dedication and commitment that made a permanent and eternal difference between Ruth and offer. Permanent difference. They had the same circumstance. They lost their husband. Same circumstance. Same travail. But different decision. Naomi said to both of them, go back. You are young. You are young ladies. Go back and marry among your people. Elimelech is dead. Kilion, the son of Naomi, is dead. Mahalon, the son of Naomi, is dead. Elimelech, the husband, is dead. Now understand, they were coming from Bethlehem, Judah, to a land that is cursed. Why? They sought their own above God's own. Bethlehem, Judah, the house of bread and praise. Naomi said, I've heard the Lord have visited my people. They were in trouble at the time. But they were God's covenant people. Don't judge them wrongly. God came back to them. He turned came back to them and began to bless them again. And Naomi said, I've heard the Lord has visited my people. I want to go back. But now I'm going empty-handed. Why would Elimelech decide to pull out of the presence of God just to go and do his own thing out there? And Ruth says, we will go with you. Killian says, uh, no, no, no. Uh, Offer says, we will go with you. And Naomi prevailed on both of them. You are young ladies. Now the tradition then is, if you, have a, uh, a, if you are married, and uh, somebody is married, and he passes on, the younger brother will inherit the wife. And it's still happening some tradition today. Uh, he said, even if I, he said, I'm old. Even if I, I have a new baby today, it will be too young for, to marry, for any of you to wait for that one to marry you. Go back to your land. Go and marry people of your choice. Your own choice. Your own choice. And offer say, mm, I think this old woman is speaking sense. She turned, she went. And that is the end of offer anywhere in scriptures. God's eternal book blanked her off, permanently off. But Ruth said to Naomi, Don't bid me to go. I won't leave you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lie, I will lie. Where you die, I will die. Where you are buried, I will be buried. Somebody shout dedication. Dedication. Ruth, from a coast land, God changed her genealogy. She married Boaz in the new land. Became a grandmother of David, King David. 
And 28 generations later, Jesus was born from that genealogy. So Ruth, from a coastland, became such a blessed woman, giving us the savior of the world. Killian, forever forgotten, eternally separated from the book of God. It's always a product of where? Your heart. Your heart. That's why dedication matters. That's why it matters. That's why it matters. It's not everything that glitter that is gold. It's not everything that occurred to you that is God. Understand this. It's not everything that glitter that is gold. It's not everything that occurred to you that is God. Be sure. You are dedicated to God and to his promoting his kingdom. Amen? In whatever profession, whatever status, whatever position, CEOs are serving God crazy these days because they discover their status can't give them life. Business people are serving God crazy these days. Because their businesses can't give them life. When you focus on running after the mandate of Jesus to seek and to save the lost, then he pours out on you. I want to conclude here. You pour out on you. Second Corinthians chapter nine, verse eight. Let's see how he pours. How does he pour? I'm not preaching to you. Paul says, I love to see you. So I'm impart on you my soul. I'm imparting. I'm not preaching. Amen? The days of trying to preach to you Impartation means helping you to become who God wants you to be. Now look at 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. Let's read that. Oh, very good. It came out clear. Let's read it very loud. No, first from King James. Let's read from King James. King James, want to read? And God is able to make how many graces? All grace for growth, grace for health, grace for wealth, grace for strength, grace, whatever. Now, somebody saw me before I started coming and, and wondering, Dad, can you carry the service today? I said, let me get to the altar. Grace will be there. Amen. Grace will be there. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> now, all grace abound towards you that ye always, how many times? Always. Having all sufficiency in how many things? All, all things may abound to every good work. Lift your two hands up and say, always. I have, I have all sufficiency all of all things. Of all things. This, is this is heaven's supernatural provision. Now I want you to understand if you could provide for Israel in the wilderness, he can provide for you. Yes, Amen? Always. All sufficiency of all things. How many things? Always. All sufficiency. All things. But a purpose is defined as kingdom purpose. That you may abound unto every good work. You will be able to do the work of the Lord without grudges. Now, the message translation you wanted to show us. Sometimes I pray this for Salamites. 
releasing astonishing blessings upon Salamites. This is where I get it from. God can pour. Come on. You know, in Catholic, I don't know if you were a Catholic before. I was. No, hold on, hold on. If you are not a Catholic before, you don't know the difference between sprinkling and pouring. I was a Catholic. 1963, I was a Catholic. Amen. And then they do the name of the Father. And, uh, but God is not going to sprinkle on you. He said, God will what? Pour. Pour on the blessings in astonishing ways. So that you are ready for anything and everything. <laughs> Salama is in the north and the middle belt. Listen. Amongst you, people are going to be writing checks in billions into the kingdom. All sufficiency of all things. But you see, if that's what you run after, you miss, you miss the mandate of the Father. It's when you are making the mandate of the Father a priority, whatever you are doing, that He turns that pouring out on you. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. As you make up your mind to remain dedicated unto the Lord, He will pour out upon you. Amen. Lift your hands.
lift your hands and pray for your heart. Oh, that this heart is surrendered, not just born again, but dedicated unto the master, dedicated unto soul winning. My pastor does not have to push me for it. This is the only reason I am a believer. This is the reason I am here. I am here only to duplicate souls. This is the only reason I am a believer. God is not a God of sentiment. This is the reason I am a child of God. Pray for yourself. Commit yourself to soul winning in the church you belong. The branch you belong must experience growth because of you. Commit yourself to soul winning. That becomes your trademark as a Christian. It becomes your trademark as a child of God. Making disciples for Jesus. He came all the way from heaven because he loved his father. And he obeyed his father. If you love him, you come, you go all the way to seek and to save the lost. Open your mouth and pray for your heart. A dedicated heart unto the mission of Jesus. A dedicated heart unto the mission of Jesus. Jesus said, Come in the volume of books. It is written of me for to do your will. Oh God, help me to do your will in soul winning and making disciples always. Oh God. Be revealed, be revealed in me. Jesus, Jesus, shine your light. Be revealed in me. Jesus, shine. Receive the spirit of boldness. Life of God. Life of God in me. You are glorified. You are glorified. So rise up from within me. Rise up from within. Let the whole world see. Let the whole world see your faith. Oh, life of God in me, life of God in me. You are glorified, you are glorified. So rise up from within me, rise up from. Let the whole world see, let the whole world see your face. Tongues of fire for hope, tongues of fire for hope. Mighty Russian, mighty Russian wind blow. In the name of Jesus. thing you are doing before you close will be praying yourself into that spirit of dedication let me conclude this impartation when the Chinese Christian came to understand that coming to church is not a dedication 
making other disciples is the dedication. When he came to understand that Christian activities is not where it starts from. It starts with dedication on the heart. Every family took responsibility to disciple another family. And a circle of six months, they have fully discipled a husband and a wife and pick up another family. In another circle of six months, they have fully discipled another husband and a wife. And over a period of time, the Christian population disciples this time, not those who go to church because you couldn't go to church. The population in China became 150 million from 800,000 who could not go to church, who had no cathedral, but committed to the mandate of Jesus. 150 million and they are still multiplying them. What Chinese government is doing now is sterilizing the Christian women so they don't give birth to more Christian babies. Torturing and killing Christian males. But they are exploding. But they are committed because they are committed to the mandate that brought Jesus. Jesus said that the world may know that I love my father. I have come to do what is written of me. He said, rise up, let's go hence. How Jesus went about doing good. Healing all that were sick. Because God was with him. A new day in your Christian adventure has started. A new day of understanding what dedication is has started. Paul says, if I must live at all, it must be Christ. For to me to live is Christ. I want to dedicate those who have been undergoing church planting training for many months now from various branches of Salem. Can you come forward to the altar as we mark your conclusion and be ready for the walk. Be ready to go seek and save the lost. Be ready to go seek and save the lost. For many months we've gone through different forms of training. Your job now is not going to sit down on the pew anymore. The local church where you belong now have pastoral materials to start planting churches of people who are going to seek and save the lost. Lift your hands, every one of you. Say, Lord Jesus, I dedicate my heart unto you. I dedicate my whole being. I dedicate my will that if I must leave from today, it is to do the mandate of Jesus. Lord Jesus, look at my heart. I may not have perfectly followed you, but you are my perfection. You are my perfection. I surrender every bit of me, Lord, that you take over from today. In the mighty name of Jesus, lift those hands up before him. Lord, be revealed in me that I be a reflection of your glory wherever I go. In my business place, in my workplace, that I be a reflection of you, Lord. Pray for yourself. I just simply be a reflection of your glory. Healing the sick, casting out devils, doing the very work you, 
you came to do. I am a continuity of your mandate. I shall not disappoint you, Lord. I receive grace. I receive grace. I receive grace, fresh grace and fresh anointing. Fresh grace and fresh anointing. Every excuse die. No excuse. Your life, life of God, life of God in me.
in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus lift both hands before the Lord father the hour has come that the purpose of their creation be unveiled father the hour has come that your hand will rest mightily upon them. You are sending them forth like the 70 were sent forth to cast out devils and to heal the sick. To make disciples for your kingdom. Oh God, the hour, that hour, oh God, has come. And now by this impartation grace of the Holy Ghost comes upon them. The hour has come. That you be in grace to function. Dedicated for distinction. In the mighty name of Jesus. As the oil comes upon you, so you shall be anointed to be called the anointed. Anointed to be called the anointed. Commission into ministry function to pastor God's people. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let your heart connect his heart. Let your own heart connect his heart. The hour has come. The hour has come. The hour has come. And Jesus gave the anointing to the disciples and sent them forth. You are sent forth. That the same unction, O oh God, that you put upon me for this commission come upon these ones. The same spirit, oh God. You say, Moses, I will take off your spirit and put upon them. Lord, I did ask you why his spirit. You say, so they can see the vision from his eyes. Lord, of my spirit, the spirit you imparted upon me for this commission, of that same spirit, oh God, take and put upon them today in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive a fresh, fresh grace, fresh, fresh grace, fresh grace, fresh grace, fresh grace. Lord, hearing fresh grace, your presence, fresh grace, fresh grace, let it rain, fresh grace, fresh grace, oh, fresh your grace, fresh grace, let it fall, fresh grace, go among them, go among them, go among them quickly, hearing your presence, oh Lord, let it rain, oh, your rain. Let it fall. Sing here in your presence. Let it rain. Let it rain. Oh, your rain. Let it fall.
your two hands unto the Lord and say, Lord Jesus, I dedicate myself afresh unto discipleship making. That is your mandate. That is the reason I'm a believer. I'm not a believer for church activities. I'm a believer to duplicate myself in the kingdom, to bear much fruit, much fruit of disciples then every activity I do in the church then receives a blessing. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 We are in the last days. That's why we're emphasizing dedication. The Bible says the army of the Lord, they are coming. I had a revelation. And in front of the Christian ecumenical center here, the Christians were all dressed in army uniform with weapons, right? But sitting in pockets and gisting. Gisting. Talking. That's all. Nothing. Some people were screaming. Being attacked by monsters. And everybody just gist in here. Nobody was moved to go for their rescue. And the Lord said to me, this is a picture the believers of the last days. That the army of God in the book of Joel were fearless. Were fierce. They were on the march. They say they come across spears and it doesn't injure them. They fall upon swords and they are not injured. They say wherever they go there is flame. They say behind and in front of them is the garden of Eden. But behind them, a desolate wilderness. They have conquered it. When will that army rise? When will that army rise? In every church, evangelism is not just a department. It's not one of the activities. It's the main reason why we are there. Many years ago in Port Harcourt, I inaugurated the Jewel's army. We are re-inaugurating the Jewel's army. In every church 
today. Now, there, here is a pastoral factor. What you do with the Jewish army will determine who are rescued. The job of the Jewish army is to seek and to save the lost. If every member of the Jewish army said, no matter how busy I am, I can make five disciples in a year. I will mean thoroughbred disciples. Disciples who are truly disciples of Jesus. Disciples who have clung to Jesus and nothing can detach them. Those are the kind of people Jewish army make. You are marching. You are conquering. Wherever on the mountain you are marching. The fire is burning because you are coming. Somebody shout, we are coming. We are coming. The Jewish army is coming. In all the churches in the north and the middle belt where you are gathered, can you stand on your feet right now and lift your hand in the name of Jesus. Father, I raise unto you this army of believers who are strong in faith, who are empowered by wisdom, who are intimate with the Holy Ghost, and who are doing exploits in your kingdom. They are marching on the mountains. No sword can cut them down. The mouth of the enemy cannot stop them. The intrigues of the enemy cannot stop them. The blackmail of the enemy cannot stop them. They are going for one mission. The mission of seeking and saving the lost. Before them, oh God, is the Garden of Eden. Take them into their blessings, oh God. Take them into the abundance of all things. Take them into astonishing blessing. Behind them, conquered territories. Territories of, of, of conquered for our God. And from today as you go out, raise your hand. By your hand, the sick shall be healed. By your hand, demons shall be cast out. By your hand, souls shall be saved. By your hands, by their hands, oh God, the kingdom of God shall be established in the heart of men. In Jesus' mighty name. The Jewish army in Salem family worldwide is established. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. Please stretch your hands and let's, and let's pray for that. Let's ask God for more strength. Let's ask God for more grace. Let's ask God for more wisdom. Let God renew his youth. Let God renew his strength. Somebody open your mouth and begin to declare upon our Father. Begin to pray for him. Begin to bless him. Begin to bless his health. Begin to bless his body. Begin to bless the mission work in his hand. Begin to declare that the Lord God of heaven will surround him with grace. The Lord will appoint upon him fresh oil. Pour out upon him fresh oil. Strength of God. Strength of the Lord Almighty upon him. And the work in his hand shall be established. We are seed of this grace. We are seed of this grace. Open your mouth and pray and ask God to renew his strength and renew his youth. Ask God to renew his strength and renew his youth. That's as God has revealed to him, we shall bring it to pass that the vision is received. The prophecy declared shall come to pass in this land and in the city where we are. Come on, declare this morning. Declare upon our Father more grace, more strength. More strength, more grace, more strength. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, members of the, uh, please, you need to come back first. Don't go, don't go. Come, uh, the, the church planting and mission team don't go don't be in a hurry just come i know what you want to do but just wait praise be the lord somebody say we are an army you know it's good to follow certain protocols hallelujah amen people of god what i know someday what i know someday what i know someday to let you know that the team that has been raised today they are 81 in number.
Praise be the Lord. 81 in number. And for eight months they've been in class. And they covered 10 courses that comes with 36 teachings. That is what they've covered over these six, uh, eight months. And uh, they are meant to stand by pastor on the pulpit. And also, as God expands and enlarges, they are going to be taking territory for Jesus. And to let you know that uh, next, the next set, I mean, set two will begin from next two weeks. Praise be the Lord.